Okay, so recently posted a video on what is DIC and is there a scoring system for it. So those who haven't seen that video, you can go to the link in the description of this video and have a look. And on that particular video, one of the member asked that how do you manage DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. So understand that two processes are going at the same time in DIC. One, because of the intense inflammatory response, because of trigger, there is a activation of the coagulation pathway across the intravascular compartment and there is a formation of microthrombi all over the body in the intravascular space. And because of this, all the coagulation factors are getting consumed in it. So your fibrin, your platelets, everything is being consumed. So there is one is a formation of thrombus. And because it's of so much consumption of these coagulation factors, there is a tendency of bleeding. Also the body tries to dissolve those thrombus. So fibrinolysis is also going over there. So there is a problem with intense uh, thrombosis occurring and there is a problem that the patient because of the consumption coagulopathy has a tendency to bleed. So what to treat? Whether we need to transfuse blood products or whether we need to use heparin to prevent the thrombosis. So let's go to uh, Irvin Rippey 9th edition chapter 90. Uh, I found this explanation a little bit simple and very to the point. Obviously you can read from any standard text which you feel. So let's go. Okay, so this is the chapter and first we'll see how DIC presents. So understand that it presents in four ways. One is asymptomatic. The patient has all the risk factor, all the laboratory evidence of DIC according to scoring system, but the patient is neither bleeding nor there is evidence of thrombosis. So nothing has to be done in these patients. This is a peculiar in sepsis and cancer patients. But important is from asymptomatic, they can further progress rapidly to uh, over DIC and become symptomatic. So this is one category. Second is bleeding. So mean they present, they can present as bleeding. The bleeding Bleeding is due to combination factor of platelet dysfunction, uh, factor depletion, thrombocytopenia. At the same time, there is an excessive fibrinolysis also going on. So patient may present from bleeding from multiple sites, IV sites or instrumentation, surgical wounds. It, it bleeds profusely and very difficult to control. The third is the thrombosis, which which in first place started means uh, there is a thrombosis in a, it is in the first place where uh, the DIC started. There is a general activation of the coagulation process, but still the thrombosis is unusual in acute DIC. But it can happen in cancer patients, which is also a prothrombic uh, state, trauma patient, and certain obstetrical patient thrombosis can prefer. Usually, the it present most of the thrombosis is venous, but arterial thrombus has been also reported. Now, purpura fulminance is a severe form of DIC in which the skin is also involved. And it is very difficult to treat in which uh, plasma pheresis, heparin, and ultrafiltrate, many, many uh, modalities are required. This is a separate topic. So essentially what we will we'll, uh, see that how to manage the asymptomatic one, how to manage the bleeding one, and how to manage the thrombosis one. Now, before going to transfusion, it is important that the most effective way to treat DIC is to treat the underlying cause that is driving the thrombosis generation. If there is a sepsis, you need to control the sepsis. If it is trauma, you need to manage trauma. If there are any uh, other condition which is triggering the DIC, we need to treat that cause until unless all other things are supportive only. Now, let's go to how to treat it the how to manage DIC transfusion. So first and foremost, these tests you need to do regularly. You need to see the uh, what is the blood count. You will monitor by uh, hematocrit, platelet count, thrombocytopenia, PT and APTT, markers of coagulation system and fibrinogen level, how it is getting cons uh, consumed. So guidelines for transfusion in patient with high risk of bleeding. So remember that these patients are at high risk of bleeding. In asymptomatic patients, the first category, there is no need to transfuse the blood products until unless your platelet count is less than 20,000. In pa patients who have platelet count less than 20,000 in most of the guidelines, we need to transfuse platelets. Now, if the patient requires any surgical intervention or, or you need to go for any intervention, then if the platelet counts are less than 50, we need to give platelets. Either you can give platelet concentrates or one unit of SDP can be transfused. Fibrinogen level if are less than 150, uh, some guidelines say less than 100, but if the fibrinogen level is less than 150, it means patient will not be able to uh, form the clots, there is a tendency to believe cryoprecipitate needs to be given. If the hematocrit levels are very low, less than 30, so suppose the hematocrit uh, is somewhere around uh, or HB is around uh, 9 or less than 8, then you need to give 
RBC, uh, red blood cells. So, hematocrit less than 30, you need to give red blood cells. If the coagulation test APTT is abnormal, then we need to transfuse fresh frozen plasma. Now, this is about the bleeding tendency. If the patient is having bleeding tendency, we need to transfuse blood, uh, platelets, cryoprecipitates, uh, RBC is if the hematocrit is low, if the coagulation system is low FAP. But what about to prevent the thrombosis? Means thrombosis also uh, is the where, the where the process started. So first we have seen that we need to prevent the trigger. But heparin therapy. Heparin therapy is reserved for the patient who has thrombosis as a component of their DIC. If you have an evidence, if the patient has an evidence of thrombosis, whether it's a venous thrombosis like DVT or pulmonary embolism or on the hands, or if there is an arterial thrombosis, only if the patient has, a, uh, has a thrombosis, then we should give heparin therapy because otherwise the patient will bleed profusely. So you need to keep this in mind. So uh, give, um, um, you need to take care of the thrombosis also even if the patient is in DIC. So now you know a little bit more about management of DIC. So please read in detail about it, discuss with your friends, your colleagues, your nursing staff, teach them and they will thank you for that. And thank you for listening and do read more about it.